What's going on everyone and welcome back to WCCF Tech TV and this is Keith again and today we're going to be talking about the latest and greatest from Noctua. Not my greatest. It's definitely the latest. It's definitely their new hotness. It's the NH-U12A. Now the NH-U12A offers itself in a very interesting position. See, it's a 120 millimeter fan power tower cooler, but it's a little bit thicker than their older NH-U12S. So it's a little bit thicker. It's got two fans instead of one. Speaking of fans, it comes with a new NFA12X25, but it's definitely their newer, better improved fans. They've got a really nice finish. The blades are super close to the frame, so you're gonna get good air pressure across a heat sink. These are very versatile. They remind me a lot of a gentle typhoon in their design, but you get two of them with this cooler. So you've got one for push-pull, whereas the NH-U12S only got you a single fan, and if you wanted an extra one, you'd have to buy it, and it's the older NFF-12s that came with those. Great fans, but they only go up to 1500 RPM, whereas these go all the way up to 2000. We're gonna take a look later and see if that really plays a big difference into the performance, or do you even need, it, need to get that high to get anything out of it? Now, the idea from Noctua is that this is supposed to give you 140 millimeter tower cooling performance in a 100 and 20 millimeter design. So the idea is in places where it won't fit. The bigger coolers like ones that I really like, which is the NHD15S, which is what I use forever in my system until I knew I was going to be downsizing. And if you missed that video, that was one of our last reviews that we did, which was the Cooler Master Masterbox Q500L, where I took my workstation and shrunk it down into a very small form factor, and that cooler simply would not fit. And ahead of time, I went ahead and changed things out for a Master Liquid 240 with a pair of Swift Tech Helix fans. So this is a very unconventional setup in the sense that you're not going to buy this setup the way that it is, and it's going to be weird that I'm comparing the two, but what I'm looking at is two different options that I had in the same system. So we're going to be testing this in the Masterbox Q500L, so you're going to see that case again getting put to task in here. And in one setup, we've got the Master Liquid 240 240 millimeter AIO cooler and the small compact case with two fans on the bottom for intake, so two NFF12 fans in the bottom for intake pushing about 1,000, 1,200 RPM the whole time. You've got an exhaust fan for the case, and then you've got the Swiftech Helix fans at the top to exhaust out for the CPU. CPU in question is the Ryzen 7 1700. But Keith, why didn't you use a 2700X? I don't have one. I have the 1700 and I use it daily, running at 3.7 gigahertz at 1.2 volts. No, it's not a maximum overclock. It is a stable everyday overclock. The idea here is once again, in a realistic setting, and this is how I use it every day. So running on the Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard to get those results and all of that jazz for what that's worth. And we're going to compare it with the NHU12A with the fans that it comes with in comparison to see where we, where we were and where we came to and did we benefit by going to this. Now one last thing to note before we start looking at the results is that the NH-U12A, I did replace the exhaust fan and the top fans with Noctua fans. So we got the NFF-12s and then the 140 millimeter fans on the top is exhaust. One could argue that it's an unfair comparison, but the reality is there are less fans in this setup. Well, it's actually the same amount of fans all over, but different configurations. And the idea is to see one with an all-in-one liquid cooler and one with all air cooling. Now that we went over the system that we're testing it in, let's talk about the installation process. So the installation for these are super easy, whether you're going the Intel mainstream or the X299 system or the AMD AM4 platform or AM3 Plus if you wanted to, but you simply replace the brackets that are there with the new SecuFirm 2 setup. It's super simple, just bolt it, bolt it. Then you drop the heatsink down with the thermal paste under there, make sure you add that. Screw it down there, one screw on either side, and then connect your fans and you're good to go. So what did those results look like? Tested it very simply. We used one run where we ran Cinebench R20 to see where they peaked out during Cinebench R20. Then I ran a half hour of OCCT to let the temperature stabilize and see kind of where things fell. And then we took a look at the fan speeds. Let's look at those results real quick. So starting off with that Cinebench R20 result, we see that the NHU12A is actually a little cooler. Interesting. See, one of the things to note here is that the fan is unobstructed, whereas in the with the 240 mil, it was kind of 
really a tight corridor that it was having to pull through. So we actually see a slightly lower temperature there, but what about in a longer OCCT run? Even more of a substantial drop there. So after about a half hour, once temperatures really saturated the coolers, we see that the NHU-12A actually is performing superior to the ML240. And what about fan speeds? Well, the Noctua managed to do it again at lower RPM. Now, mind you, it's about 110, 115 RPM lower, but the simple fact is it did it at lower RPMs, taking up less room in the case. And, well, all right, all right, I hear you. That part is a little bit, eh, well, it's kind of a one-off. Maybe later we'll strap this thing to a 9900K, uh, if that's something you'd like to know, and see how it performs over there. Drop that down in the comment section below. I might take a look at that one if we have time. But moving on to the last thing that we want to test was the fans. So these fans, the NFA12X25 fans, really good fans, but what about if we swap them out? What if the cooler came with the um, NFF12s or the NFF12 IPPC, which is the industrial fans that run at 3000 RPM. So very simple. We did the same test. We ran them again, swapped out the fans, two fans each setting. So what we found here in Cinebench R20 is the NFA12 X25 came in at the best perform, well, second best performance. The IPPC beat it out. I mean, it's 3000 RPM. I would hope that 3000 RPM, but what about whenever you take it into account for a long term OCCT scan, not a whole lot of difference there. See the NFA 12 by 25s come in at slightly lower than the NFF 12, even though the RPM is higher. And then the NFF 12 IPPC came in uh, only a couple degrees cooler. So it looks like what we're happening here is we're hitting a thermal threshold for the capacity of the cooler. We are overwhelming the cooler. It simply cannot dissipate any more heat than what it is. So that's actually kind of a good thing. So you can see here, let, well, let's take a second and let's look at the maximum fan speed. So the NFF, the NFA 12 X 25s came in at 1979, NFF 12s 1426, and the NFF 12 IPPC came in at 2,870. So 3,000 RPM fan, 2,000 RPM fan, 1,500 RPM fan. What we can see here is Noctua did take the cooler. They paired it with the best possible fan that they could have because of the sound signature. If you don't believe me, so we're gonna look at, listen to these fans first. We're gonna do the NFA, the NFFA 12 X 25 at idle, under load, and then 100% load. And then we're gonna compare it to the NFF 12 at 100% load and the NFF 12 IPPC at 100% load to see the sound signature difference there. So let's take a listen to those real quick. I think we can all agree that the NFF A12 X25 is the best fans that they could have paired with this. So the performance on this cooler is great. It definitely is good for small form factors where you can't fit in much higher ones. It gives you a good op, um, alternative to something like the, uh, I almost want to say the Hyper 212. The problem is this thing comes in at a hundred bucks. This is far from a cheap cooler. It is definitely very much not an inexpensive cooler. So for comparison's sake, the NHU-12S, which is a little thinner cooler with a single fan, comes in at $60. It's 30, it's $40 cheaper. But the price difference does get you two of the fans. If you bought these individually, they're $30 a piece. So that's $60 worth of fans and $40 worth of heat sink and you know, installation brackets. So yeah, definitely. Definitely gonna be a per game basis, but if you're in the market for a single smaller tower heatsink, this is definitely a high quality, high performing part and is definitely worth a look from you guys. So let us know what you think about air cooling, tower coolers, what do you think about the fans, do you think about the performance, do you think it's worth the money, too much, too little, I don't know. Wanna hear your thoughts down below. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you all in the next one.